Now, everyone is naturally aware of a supernatural power that is higher than nature and is greater than the whole world. Deep in our hearts, we all sense that this power is extremely kind, but also clear and firm. This sense invites us towards this great source of the universe, which we call God. We are all born with this sense, which is part of our very human makeup, and we call it the fitra, or primordial human nature. In times of great difficulty, when we face disaster or destruction and we have no way out, this inner sense gets stronger, and we call out to this higher power for help to rescue us from these threats. Yet in normal times, or when we feel busier with the world and its demands, we feel the presence less. We also can disregard it if we grow up in an environment where the presence is denied, though it never fully goes away. A good example is Russia. After decades of communist atheism, the dissolution of the Soviet Union saw an immediate resurgence in religious worship among the people. But what actually is the Fitra? Well, it's the sum of all those traits found among all humanity, in all places, and in all times. The tendency to live in communities, even for the recluse, the love of a mother for her children, the urge to pair with the opposite sex and form families, the hatred of lying and oppression, all of these are examples of the Fitra. Yet the most powerful trait of the Fitra, by far, is the awareness of the existence and power of God. There has been no time in history when belief in God and faith did not exist among people. In every age and time, some form of belief existed and this itself is clear reason why the worship of God is from the depths of the spirit and this is because it is embedded in the fitra or human nature. Even someone who says they do not believe in God will instinctively look to something else to replace that loss of belief. An unbelieving scientist, for example, would replace God's eternal existence with ideas of the eternality of matter or energy, or replace the divine wisdom of God with ideas of the wisdom of nature. These replacements are exactly what we term idols, and idols can be both actual images we worship, but also ideas we let dominate our worldview and our lives. We cannot disperse with the idea or reality of God, for without it the world would lose its meaning. Since this fitri nature is embedded within us, we can conclude that God himself wants us to know about him. Thus, if we want to know about God deeper, and overcome whatever doubts about him that have been placed in our minds and hearts, the easiest way to get to know God is simply to sincerely ask him, himself, to reveal himself to us in whatever way we can comprehend, and to make our belief in him firm. God has said in chapter 40, verse 60 of the Holy Quran, Call upon me and I will answer you. That is his promise. Find a quiet time, like early morning or late night. The best time is just before dawn, and call upon God. Even if he might still be a hypothesis, call upon him, and ask him to show himself to you, and I promise you that you will definitely not be disappointed.